Oh, this looks so promising. And oh, shoot, I forgot something. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm so excited to get into this repot on by Leilonia Joyce Hilton. But I see I'm missing something. So uh, excuse me. Sorry, I need my tweezers for this project and probably my wonderful little knife. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on the patio, Leilonia Joyce Hilton. Doesn't this look marvelous? Look at all that root growth. And this repot should have happened several weeks ago. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm super excited to get this orchid into just lava rock and self-watering. Hope you're having a fabulous day. Thank you for joining me on the patio. It's good to have you here. It's a very breezy day, a cool-ish breezy day, which is nice, especially when it comes to repots. So this orchid was soaked two days ago in TNC Microhydro. And what I intend to do is not remove, if possible, the plan is to not remove too much of the older media and if need be, carry over old roots. This is fabulous. Oh yes, and I want to show you something at the end which I hope I'm not going to forget because my mind is spinning. I just want to get this done. Oh look, it had one of those coca husk things to start with and was just up potted. We can take that out, that's okay. But I want to keep some of the dead roots because as it's going into lava rock, huh, the repot should that day, oh, I don't, I don't want to move those. Should that repot ever happen, then I'm hoping that dead roots will buffer against the, let's say, detrimental side effects of lava rock and roots grabbing onto them, destroying them. And of course, I would love to keep the mycohydro, some of the components intact if they have populated themselves into the pot. I would love to carry those over. <laughs> this is going to be awesome, stress-free, and pretty much straightforward. Just another look-see. Oh, I should have done this weeks ago. I just didn't get around to it. You can see some roots have stopped growing. No bueno. But it looks promising. She looks much more promising on a vigorous root system than just the rubescence. Yeah, I'm loving this. This is looking great. And of course, I'm so tempted to get in there, peel off all the sheaths, do all that fun stuff, all that cleanup. That's not going to happen. We're just going to get her situated. This is a 20 centimeter pot. It is crocked with extra large lava rock just so that I can buy myself a little bit more of the smaller lava rock that I will be filling the rest of the pot up with. But let's see if we can gauge the height of the orchid the final height, let's say, so that I can pour in more lava rock before actually filling in and around her. <laughs> now, if you know Leilonia's or let's say her parent, Lelia Rubescens, you will know that they have extremely long spikes. So you're probably wondering what this mediocre little support is doing in here. Well, if I'm going to need it one day, at least I can tie another wire into the loop up here and continue supporting the spike. But that is just for eventualities. Normally, I would prefer in this instance not to put a support in. It's just for aesthetic purposes. And probably for the winter months, it would make my life much, much easier when I have to have her on a shelf. But for the sake of the spike, I want to be at least better safe than sorry. And if there is no need for it, then I can always, always nip it off at the edge of the pot. This is going to be a little bit tedious as I fill up with lava rock. But I'm going to take my sweet time with this process because I only want to do it once. So the lava rock I'm going to be using from here on in is small because I do not want the roots to be crawling around the surface of the media. I want them to get into the pot as soon as possible, especially in my dry climate. None of these root tips should dry out. They should find their way in. And I'm going to focus with the lava rock in the back of the pot and then cautiously scooch it around to the front. Besides, we have a nice little visual of more orchid root tips. Who doesn't love that? Whoa, that's great. She is in place. Now for the fiddle part. I want her exactly here, so I'm going to risk putting in lava rock at the front right out of the gate. Just risk it and be very careful, very pedantic about it. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're wondering why I'm not using LECA, well, this orchid is more of a warm grower and my winters are just too cold, even for the orchid herself. And I don't want the evaporative cooling of the LECA to destroy anything. I should not have bought this orchid as per, you know, we always say that, but in my case, I should not have bought her. However, she's here now and she's not going to be risked, let's say, to lose her while I experiment with LECA. No way. So just using lava rock allows me also to keep these roots much drier during my very cold winter months. And when I say that indoors, my temperatures drop down to 14 degrees Celsius, and that can be at night and during the daytime and for an extended period of time. So that's no bueno for an orchid that is more of a warm grower. We don't need to use the support. Let me clean up because I did not forget my little surprise I want to show you. Oh, by the way, very carefully, I'm going to turn her. Can you see that new growth coming there? <laughs> so, note to self and note to anybody, the new roots grow when a new growth is about to start, but the new roots start on the previous growth. This is important to note for the future reference of this orchid when it comes time to repot her. Same on this side, we have the previous bulb growing all the new root system, and there is a new growth coming. So this is awesome. Wonderful observation to make. It makes repot timing so much easier to plan. While I go and get my other candidate and drain this orchid, would you please give this video a thumbs up? I would so appreciate it. And also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, consider yourself super duper welcome. I would so appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. Muchas gracias from Southern Spain. Heavy pot, also note to self. So that was just plain RO water because as you saw, there are no active roots in the pot itself. I'm not going to put fertilizer into the reservoir. There's nothing there to absorb it. So now the focus is to get these roots into the pot, get them to do their work, and then we can start to fertilize. But here's a little surprise. Let me show you. Ta-da! <laughs> This is a second one. <laughs> I was so concerned about the state of this piece right here. I actually thought it was attached to the main plant, but it wasn't, it's a separate piece. So in the winter, it was shriveling really badly. And I took it off and I just potted it up in large lava rock in an orchid top and hoped for the best. And look at this little one. It is growing a new growth right there. And all the roots are going down into the lava rock. Don't want to move it too much, but I think you see that. Isn't that awesome? I am super pleased that I have a little 2.0 just in case. And yes, well, I'm still not going to experiment with the mother plant. So these two will now go indoors so that they can get acclimated and situated and start to get their grow on. I'm not exposing any of them to the harsh conditions which you may have heard over the microphone. It is super breezy. It is wonderfully warm for me, but far too dry. I've got 20, 23% humidity today. The wind is blowing a hoolie. That is not what these orchids need. So in they go, and I hope they will grow. <laughs> See what I did there? I hope you enjoyed this little laid back video of potting up my Leilonia Joyce Hilton. I want to thank you so much for watching and staying to the end. And on top of that, I want to wish you a fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Oh, that's a wonky heart. Huh. Better? Heart? Better? Better. Bye! <laughs>